Everybody loves a Cinderella story. Prescott or Prescott, Arizona, whatever you want to call it. It's in the mountains, around five, 6,000 feet. I lived here for a year in 2006. That time, that mountain bike scene was, was definitely growing. But the trails were, they were good back then, this whole zone. And I know there's capability of being some really gnarly trails if it's routed right. I was really interested to kind of revisit it and, Riding some of the old trails I used to train on and see if I have a, like a different perspective on them, whether it's good or bad or things are easier or just as hard. <sighs> Wish Patty was here. It's as easy as that. Done and dusted. Now he has no excuses. Perfect. Here are three things to like about Wicklow. The variety of trails. The chance for unanticipated greatness. And most interestingly of all, the Irish. Patty, our mechanic, is from uh, Ireland. He's not too far from the race venue. The weather's been good, food's been good, hospitality's been good. It'd be terrible if they came here and then they all hated it. That, that'd be the worst things. One third manager, one third bike technician, one third team psychologist. If Patty can't fix it, it's probably better that it stays broken. Good as gold. Patty. <laughs> He's a classic Irishman. We're so lucky to have him. He's such a positive, outgoing guy. Anything that like, goes wrong, he's just like, yep, I'll fix it, yep, yep, we got that. <laughs> like, no worries, don't stress. I'm an electrician by trade, and then I come from a farming background, so fixing stuff is no problem, but I didn't know anything about bikes. I knew there's two wheels, a chain, a set of cranks, and I have to spin around. The guys had to teach me how to put pedals on the bike. I had no idea. Honestly, when Curtis met me first, he's like, ah, this guy hasn't a clue what he's talking about. Yeah, he's a good friend now. How can you not like Patty? Oh, one millimeter. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to get out here and actually see some of the trails. Sometimes you're so busy and the way it's set up, you're not so close to the trails. So it's actually worked really well now that we can get out and get a sneak preview of what they're what they're up to. The fans, oh my, the fans are like no other. Actually, it's what, it's what made the weekend, to be honest. It's kind of complete opposite compared to Rotorua. A lot of rock, a bit awkward in some sections, definitely the way some stages start. A bit trousy in a way, like you really have to kind of hop, skip, and stay like on this edge line to get going in the run. When I moved here, um, I've been racing pro for four years, fully funded my seasons and work winners. And I think at one point I uh, became jaded or negative, I guess. I 
I'm over this whole mountain bike racing thing. I'm gonna buy a house and you know, get a job and all this stuff that you're kind of like maybe brainwashed to do in life. And after like five, six months of being away from it, it kind of just taught me like what really matters and what is my passion. It was simple as going out to this little trail, maybe like five minutes out of town, just riding my bike, having a good time. And I got that feeling, that adrenaline rush, and uh, I ended up calling my buddy. Kind of got me into mountain bike a bit. He's like, hell yeah, Keen, you need to just go out and continue chasing your dream, dude. I think you should go out racing still and just follow your heart, and that's kind of what I did. Curtis Keen, the American dream. From that point on, I found out that this is what I was born to do. This is my passion. I'm very fortunate for the life I do live. I don't take anything for granted, that's for sure. Sports are very rarely about the acts themselves. Sports are about the storylines, the players, the unexpected. Whether we choose to acknowledge it or not, if you do it long enough, if you give enough of yourself to it, we eventually define ourselves by sports we choose to play. I think the thing with the Enduro is it's new, it's growing, every race is a new challenge and I'm still enjoying being part of that kind of growth process of the sport. That's the hard part, I mean, motivation, I'm racing for so long now. I don't know really how I do, but I guess I love riding bikes. As soon as I'm having fun on a bike, I don't know, something happened and I start to be creative, I find some line and I'm like just so playful on it. For me, that's the most important thing. At the top of the stage, there was a good few people there and they were all real quiet and then once the guy who counted me down said go, they just went mental. And straight away, I was just like, yes, this is amazing. And just rode flat out in the whole way down. Even from the sidelines, watching the storylines play out is fascinating. A knee injury may have kept Mitch Ropolato off his bike this weekend, but it did little to hinder his enthusiasm for the drama of the race. There you go, come on! Oh, get out there, get out there! He says every cheer he's given them has given them an extra 10 horsepower. Good. That, was good. that was good. That was real nice. Get on it, boys! Get on it! 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 Get Little guys like that stage. Very challenging, it's quite intense. Like generally all the stages are very punchy. So it's like flat and aggressive. So you need to carry speed and uh, get a strong momentum. Yeah, I like it. There's a good variety. Some are rocky, technical. So it's a lot more physical here. Last year at this time, Ireland's Greg Callahan was living in a van at races, scraping together entry fees and money for parts. To see him win in front of his family, his hometown, and the crowd, it was like movie stuff. Great Callahan's a legend, now in my opinion. Everybody loves a Cinderella story. Next on On Track. The 
Ryan in Scotland is sick. It's so good.